Welcome, welcome people. We are out the gorgeous pop up for as black as love and love ya ya. Look at this gorgeous stuff, gorgeous stuff. Hey, 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 hey. Rompong celebration, <laughs> celebration. Okay, people. Gift ideas, bespoke, stand out. Look at this specialness. Look, earrings. Yeah, Siam, Siam. Glasses. We're talking about this in a moment with the beautiful creatives behind this beautiful stuff. Look, look at, look at, look at. See, see, look, head wrap. See packaging. See interior. You love it. Come, come. Sunday, this Sunday, the 22nd. This is how long you have. Tonight, Friday the 20th. Yeah? 10.30. They're here selling. Look at. Look at. Mm-hmm. Head wraps. Look at dress. T-shirt. <laughs> Interior. Look at. Okay, people. Belts. Beautiful belts. Mm -hmm. These are Love Yaya belts. Bespoke, beautiful. And her head wraps by Nana. <laughs> T-shirts, <laughs> cups, yes, yes, yes. Now, we're going to meet founders. Beautiful bespoke pieces. And these are the ladies behind. Here we go. Yes, celebration. Cheers to you. Let's like this. Okay. Ladies, welcome. Viewers, welcome. Please share this video. Okay. And welcome gift ideas. We have on our right, Akria, who is the creative founder behind As Black As Love. And our left, her sister Nana, who is the founder of Love Yaya. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Please tell us about your brands and yourself. Well, um, As Black As Love is me and it comes from, I decided, um, the place of just before the creativity comes out, gestation, pregnancy, it's all in black, creation begins in the black before it's exposed into the light. So, and I've decided that place is love, so it should be As Black As Love. So that's where the idea came for, for the name. And it represents everything I create. So whether it's clothing, bags, jewelry, whatever I do is an expression of that love that begins in the black before it comes out. And yourself? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm Nana Evans and I'm the founder of Love Yaya. Um, I came up with the name Love Yaya as a celebration of my sister, one of my elder sisters that passed and just to keep her memory alive and I feel that she's a guiding force for me so I wanted to celebrate her life and, and she's still living within me so that's where I came up with Love Yaya. I make leather belts and headscarves, uh, kimonos, I sell jewellery as well and it, again following on from my sister it's like she is probably my one of my heroes. <laughs> she taught me how to sew and that allowed me to have my independence and celebrate my creativity. So I'm just carrying it on. I'm just sharing with the world what my talents are. Wonderful. And you guys have got some serious talents, okay? <laughs> Which you're actually, I'm sure you're adorning at the moment. Tell us about the headpiece that you're wearing. Okay, so this is one of my headscarves. It's a new print that I've picked up that's gonna be on my website tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I will be listing those. Um, also, my sister is wearing one of mine as well. Yeah. See, at the moment we're in love with red. Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't even realise you were going to be having a red one. I don't know. You do that all the time. And you have the Fulani earrings in as well. Yeah. Yes, and we're, we're both a bit obsessed with Fulani um, women and Fulani culture and their makeup and their jewellery. But um, I really like their jewellery because it's based on a spice that in Ghana we call prekese. 
um, it's all over West Africa, but I don't know the other names of it. And it cures so many things, diabetes, gets rid of ulcers. And they used to trade it all the way up into Egypt back in the days of the Pharaoh. And then they started making their jewelry to look like Prekeset as well. And that's where they used to keep their gold. The women would have on the giant Fulani Probably earrings. Seen pictures of it as well. As it usually has like a bit of a red thread. Mm. Sometimes it would be so big they would be wearing it over their head and hanging down as earrings. They are amazing. Yeah. And my sister kind of introduced me to them and I was like, yeah, this, this kind of, it encapsulates both of our brands so I want to be selling it as well yeah. to my customers. And my overarching aim would be, you see in the 90s and 80s, the bamboo, gold bamboo earrings that was just yeah. synonymous with black women. Yeah. <laughs> Fulani jewellery should be exactly the same. We should be able to see it and be like, that is inherently African and it, it's a part of us. Mm, mm. So yeah, every woman should have one. Yes. Or two. <laughs> um, I like this. And we have this here. I'm going to get everything in the shots for the jewellery behind you as well. Tell us about the pop-up shop that you have here and up and coming, uh, what's it called? Events. Yeah. So the pop-up shop, that we've got here is three brands that have come together and luckily for us um, the management company who have done this whole development have got one shop for the community that's free for designers and creators and you get it for a week so um, three of us came together and so Nana had it for one week and then the other lady whose label is Gita's Portal she had it for the next week but they decided to join forces so we could all have our stuff for two weeks. So that's, that's why we've managed to stay here for so long. And then in two weeks time, I'm going to be selling with um, the Azawiwa um, event that's happening in Hackney in the High. And I think that's a one day event finishing about 10 p.m. And then you've got into... I'm gonna be a stylist live from the 10th of November to the 12th, and that's in Olympia. So I'll have a lovely IR stand. Uh, um, I'm at stand A33, which is in the main arena space. Um, I'm right next to, I think it's the Johannibal's, something like that. But yeah, please come out and, and find me. That would be great. And then we also, both of us are gonna be at Etsy Made Local oh, in Shoreditch. Yes. We have a shop there at Shop 7 on Dre Walk. That's going to be great. There's 16 Etsy sellers all selling. You can meet the designer makers. It's going to be a great opportunity for other people who want to be selling on Etsy as well to come and meet sellers. And what date? That's on the 30th of November yes. to the, the 3rd, 3rd of December. Because because the fashion is hot, the five people have come to extinguish. Yes, hot fashion, hot fashion. Come packaging. No, it was the thirtieth to the third of December. In yeah. case anybody missed it. Now this is you guys were telling me this is very unusual to have in central London. Come forward. Yes, sorry. Come yeah, yeah. Central London to have fashion space available. Yeah. Tell me about the challenges yeah. that you have like actually come across beforehand. Well, you know, as an independent. As an independent brand, we would love to be able to be selling to the public all the time and to have shop spaces that were affordable. The problem is the high street is so expensive. We really it, we struggle, so we're trying to come up with ways where consortiums of designers can come together and be in a shop space. Um, it's, we would love for some type of government initiative to put us on the high street. This is great. What Hackney have is amazing, having the Hackney shop, because designer makers can come in for a week and show the public their brand. It really needs to be in every single borough there should be a shop or two or five on various high streets where designers could do that and we could all be celebrating style and British made goods. That's it. And authentic made goods. Yeah, absolutely. Spoke. Yeah. Can you tell me, Akria, tell me about the ch any, any challenge 
that um, in any context to do with this, how you've had to realise your brand and the solution that you've had to apply? Yeah. I mean, our biggest challenge really is, as my sister was saying, is how to really meet the public so that they know what we're doing and they also can take part in our services. Um, social media obviously helps, but it's not the same as people being able to come in. At the moment, I think what we really need is probably six to ten other makers who can see our stuff and think, oh, I've got something a bit different. It can work with these people. We found loads of shops, but we need to have our group of people together so we can put together our money to take over a shop that's maybe asking 45000 a year. Because we found huge shops where everyone can have quite a big space, but we don't have the money to take it first and then find the other creative, creatives. We need to meet the creatives first, who all want to share a space, and then we can go ahead to find something for all of us. So creative in. strength in numbers. Absolutely. It's possible, it's yes. possible. Because I, I noticed you literally stopping traffic, people slowing down no. to look, adding flavour yes. to <laughs> London and the place, and all types of people. Yes. And um, so in terms of that, what advice do you have to independent creatives anywhere in the world, viewers around the world watching, in it's engagement? Mm. What kind of advice would you give for engagement yeah. and being authentic and survival tips? Yeah. Cool. Well, you're good on the online selling part. Yeah. Nana's very, very, very good at that. I think personally all I can say is Share, 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 share everything you're doing all the time, all of your photographs. But none is the one who knows how to really make money online. Really, like, yeah, selling online, um, there are two schools of thought. You know, you create your own website, which you should do anyway. But third party sites like Etsy or eBay or Amazon, they do really work as long as your product is strong, you've got your SEO in place. You have a good range of products, you know, you need numbers of them. It's not like three or four, you need 20, 50 different things that are selling. You can make a living for yourself. And it's important that we look at that as women, family, like families, just creating stability for your family. Selling online can do that. It can work from your house, from your kitchen. It's, you just need to look into what you're doing but there, there are platforms out there to help there are tools Etsy is a great place I have been self-employed working for myself for the last three years solidly and that's purely due to selling on Etsy mm -hmm. I'm totally an advocate mm -hmm. if anybody wants some advice you can hit me up on Facebook on Instagram on Twitter on, on my Etsy page you can find me ask me I will help anybody in any way that I can and what are your social media handles? How can people connect with you? It's always whatever it is, facebook.com forward slash love yaya. Same with Instagram, same with Twitter. Love yaya, L-O-V-E-Y-A-A-Y-A-A. -A -A -A. Right. They'll all be added, links will be added at the end of this interview, at the bottom of it. Um, thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. Can I help you in any way? Yeah, just the... How can people connect with you to... Um, um, yeah. yeah, on Facebook, on Instagram, Aquia Ophosuhene, which is A-K-U-A-O-F-O-S-U-H-E-N-E, Aquia Ophosuhene. Or even if you just put in As Black As Love, that all the ways, you know, you can find me. Thank you. <laughs> all the links will be provided, everybody. Thank you.